Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and today's video we're going to talk and examine the new pugilist unit, Raldor. So Raldor is a high offense DPS and a very capable physical tank. So we're going to talk or frame this conversation about him in how he is as a physical DPS and how he is as a physical tank. So, I'm going to frame this conversation according to that two routes. So, first, we're going to talk about him as a physical DPS. How does he fare as a DPS or how do I view him as a DPS? So, first, let, um, as a DPS, Raldor has a Death Piercing Master ability of plus 20. Which is pretty, uh, which is pretty standard for any new DPS unit, but he has this ability, or the pugilist. I think it was pugilist mastery that increases his death penetration by twenty as well, making him reach a death penetration of forty percent. I would say that's a little bit more death penetration than Ruin Knight Stern would have, even with Exorcist card. Ruin Knight's turn has a 20 death penetration in his master ability and Exorcist gives plus 12 um, death penetration. So that equals to 32% death penetration. So Raldor with his buff for 3 turns uh, gets a little bit more but we'll also remember that since this is a buff it only lasts 3 turns. So if he doesn't get to cast a skill within those three turns, so the buff is essentially useless. That's the only thing. Unlike Exorcist, which is something permanent that I think still in that scenario, Stern still has the upper hand because his additional death penetration with that card is permanent. Another thing that is going for him is his limit break that debuffs the enemy strike resistance by 30% eight percent in my opinion this is a very good or one of his best abilities as it completely obliterates any damage mitigation prospect of tanks this might be a little bit overkill for agrius and other tanks who already have or who already are weak to strike but this is a good ability to have against a resistant tank like Whisper or against Anglebert, who probably is the only tank so far with a good strike resistance. I don't know anyone who is except for those two. I would say this ability has much, has much, as much resistance piercing as the slash piercing in the Exorcist card would have with... As I've said, but the only difference is that the Exorcist card doesn't need any casting. And another thing, one of the things that caught people's attention about him is his two OKO skills, the Demon Purger and Spirit Breaker. Both skills get additional damage based on how many times Raldor gets hit, which is, I think, maxed at 5. Demon Purger starts out with 210% damage multiplier and gets increased 75% each time he gets hit. It costs a good amount of AP, not too high, not too low with 28p. So the thing with Demon Purger is it starts out as a large attack and it gets even larger, like XL larger damage multiplier. But the downside to Demon Purger is it has a range of one so it in terms of ranges it's good damage but it's pretty horrible range so i don't know if there is a scenario outside of manual that raldor will get to use the skill it sounds amazing but i don't think it's gonna be something used by the ai a lot the next is um uh spirit breaker uh spirit breaker starts out at 130 damage multiplier and with all of the additional damage increase by the times he gets hit 
he ends up with 330 percent it's almost as big as flare or a large um damage multiplier attack um not to mention this skill decreases also the enemy's attack so that's pretty good compared to demon perjure this has a range of three three i think three um so it does a little bit better than demon perjure so i'm kind of thinking this might be more used often by the ai just because it has more range but less damage these are two amazing skills i have to admit that's if he really lasts more than two or three hits which i think i will touch on later as I've said, although his attacks are very high and he has the meta advantage, meaning a lot of tanks have no resistance to strike or really bad resistance to strike and general, uh, generally DPS units are weak to strike as well. So he really has the environment or the roster of units in his favor. But in the flip side of things, all his pugilist skills have very short range, which is for me a cause for concern. Probably the shortest in the game ranging from 1 to 3 range, which means he has to get really close to the enemy as fast as he can. Which is, to be honest, quite adept, uh, adept with, so it's not really that of an issue. Uh, he has a move of 3 and a jump of 2, making him as mobile as a Dragoon, and his agility is nothing to scoff at, which is at par with Agrius. This tells me, in terms of getting around the map, you can customize him, or he has a lot of versatility, and you can customize his pacing with your DPSs very well. You want him to be close to your team? Leave him at move 3. You want him to move ahead of your team. Slap on some Thief Lore for move 4. Or if you really want him to get ahead or really move around, you can slap him with Thief Lore and throw in some Psyga Gauntlets to give him like um, move 5 and jump 3, which is very mobile. So yeah, he is versatile in terms of movement and that in itself will give you a lot of strategy options and at the same time kind of alleviates the pressing concern for his lack of range. To summarize his DPS route, he can be a competent bruiser with his pugilist mastery skills and I think he has one more skill that gives him an attack percent up. but for me, the most important thing is the death penetration that his uh, pugilist mastery skill gives along with his master plus 20 death penetration master ability, which is a little bit higher than Ruin of Night's Turn. And he has the uh, ability to obliterate a big chunk of damage mitigation with his limit break. He is definitely a strong uh strong unit against ice units with his demon perjure and spirit breaker skills but he is balanced by his short range or the short range of his abilities with that being said he does have the ability to close the gap quickly with versatile movements and agility passive from thief uh job and yeah his agility stat is already good to begin with the downside to him though, although he has a lot of good things going for him, the downside with him as a DPS is he really lacks the um, vision cards and espers to actually shine. Unlike slashers at the moment with the upper hand, they um, the game hasn't really released any good espers or vision cards for strike or for fire units in global i think they have phoenix in jp but yeah in global we don't have those yet um so that's his problem that's why compared to ruin knight stern and maybe other slash units he may seem he may although he can compete he can't be that meta changer just 
unlike Stern and then um, Cain, which Cain, on the other hand, has this demon wall, the plus 15 pierce attack. So he lacks those kinds of cards to help him shine as a DPS. So next, let's talk about his capabilities as a tank. What makes him special as a tank compared to others or generally a paladin? To be honest, he's pretty standard, a uh, pretty standard tank. He has a standard kit with the exception of not having a defensive master ability, putting him in the same basket as Duane as an offensive tank. He doesn't have immortal spirit, which makes him less of a pain, but he has the same skill set as Agrias with Sentinel and Saintly Wall. But what sets him apart from her is that he has this skill call, called Iron Body Stance, which makes him just a little bit, a little bit more capable as a physical tank. The thing with Raldor I, that I forgot to record or mention is that he doesn't have a hate master ability that sets him apart from Duane in terms of being an offensive tank. It actually, it makes him fall off the tank category even more because he doesn't have any defensive or tank master abilities at all. But... Uh, at least he has Taunting Blade. Well, other offense units like Raryu has Taunting Blade. So this kind, this kind of cements him as a bruiser for me. But I digress and continue that he needs Taunting Blade to generate hate. That Taunting Blade is around 44 AP. And that would mean that he would have trouble generating AP for his other skills just the same problem Agrias has when she uses Taunting Blade. It prevents him from using his high-valued skills like his um, Limit Break and uh, his 20 AP skills that are a bit more expensive. The next, uh, mo the next most important thing to scrutinize about a tank is their Def and SPR stack. Their def and SPR stack tells you how much damage mitigation they innately have. So Raldor's def stack without cards amounts to 24, 12 from his Holy Knight's protection, and 12 from his ability board, while his SPR stack innately starts at zero, which definitely tells you he's bad at magic. So this table I'm showing you is basically what his damage mitigation would look like equipped with certain cards and espers. So you can see here, uh, you can check the other cards, but the best value you can get with him for his unit uh, physical defense is 66%. This is without resistance yet. We're just talking about his... Uh, overall defense with espers, VC, and equipment. So um, the highest you can get is probably 66%. Maybe more if you have platinum robe, like three points more. But in this example, we're using sortilage. Um, the highest you can get with his SPR would be uh 36 percent with salt uh sortilage but i think um you can get around nine points more or 40 plus with magic coat so pretty good pretty uh you can actually build him like having a good spr and good death balance but here's the kicker this is where uh raldor really changes it if you add on his resistances. So here's a table where I show you his damage mitigation stacked with his resistances. So for Raldor's slash resistance, he gets an overall damage mitigation of 71%. So if, if you don't know what damage mitigation is yet, it's basically the percentage that 
gets take so you have a damage of four thousand right and this means that 71 percent of your slash damage gets nullified or taken away and whatever is left is what goes through or damages him so yeah i have a video which i will leave the link in the description that explains this okay so his slash uh his overall slash damage mitigation is 71 percent his overall pierce damage mitigation is 81 percent his strike is 66 his missile is 86 pretty good if you compare Agrius's stats or damage mitigation stats with Raldor, they're pretty much the same except for some areas where Pierce is for Raldor is higher while um while strike is higher for Agrias. But the biggest difference is of course the magic resistance where where Raldor really has like an abysmal 21% and Agrias is an 80%. This is because um, Raldor's innate magic resistance is negative 15%, but that's mm, something that Fenrir can fix with its plus 20 magic resistance percentage, or even not max, just 15 should be fine. Um, so despite being weak to magic, it, with Fenrir, he probably won't get OKO'd with magic. Most magic users has a maxed damage of 4,000 to 5,000. With his stats, SPR stats, and Fenrir, he can survive at least two hits with his HP. So I'll show you here what the, what the probable damage might look like with magic uh, over here. If uh, the magic attack like reaches 4,000, um, the overall damage of the magic skill reaches 4,000. In conclusion, if you're going to pull or play Raldor, which is the better route to take? Is he better as a DPS bruiser or as a tank? So for me though, he is definitely better as a DPS bruiser. He has an exceptional death piercing ability that can reach up to 40% and the 38% resistance piercing that's a total of 78 percent damage mitigation piercing and this is the reason why he is hailed as the one punch man his short range is not much of a concern due to his mobility mobility but that also means as a tank he can be done in by enemies if he moves to the front line too fast and especially with magic units Another point as a DPS, I'm still hard pressed to find a tank with very good strike resistances other than Engelbert, which might make him a capable tank killer with his limit break and the right circumstances. I'm looking at you, Dwayne, with your negative, I think, 15% strike resistance. So in order for him to shine, he needs someone to tank the incoming magic damage as he closes in against an enemy. This kind of, uh, this way, his other skills such as Demon, Demon Purger and um, Spirit Breaker are able to shine. But if you go against a full physical DPS team, he definitely can tank and might put demon purger or spirit breaker into good use he is definitely good against missile and pierce teams so yeah that's so that's all that i think i could say about raldor additional notes though in the upcoming guild wars um map i think he's gonna perform really well just because of the additional ply plus 15 percent strike attack and his biggest enemy probably ildira at this point is kind of debuffed in that map in the sense that his height skills his height related skills like i like height water or something like that doesn't get any um multipliers just because the map is flat so 
this um all arithmeticians actually is gonna uh, lose advantage because they don't have the height although they have the level um level skills their height skills is basically powered down so this means more survivability for him i guess his biggest threat right now would possibly be miranda which not a lot of people bring so yeah that's my two cents on the guild wars and raldor he's going to be very good there because the map is kind of built for him with a medium-sized map that he can easily traverse and then although another thing sorry if i ramble other thing the map is good for him because it's flat although he has the ability to traverse like um very complicated map terrain but his skills doesn't have the area height to do so so having a huge or a medium-sized map that needs a little bit of walking but no area uh, range height difference allows uh, allows him to be more um good or better <laughs> sorry better in this map because he can hit the enemy easily without thinking of range height or something along those lines so again thanks for watching i hope you enjoyed this video and leave a like subscribe and Ciao.